Well, I, I had told him he missed like four wide open shots, and I said, you better keep shooting it because he passed one up. And I said, you shoot the ball. And the, the play we ran was for him uh, to shoot the three. Um, I got a lot of confidence in him. He's shown that he can miss some shots and come back and make shots. Um, you know, it was nice that we were able to play the whole second half with Savir. Um, you know, I mean, I um, look, it was it was a game I thought would be like this. Uh, we struggled to get some baskets when we needed to. Ty Ty being out probably affected that. But they were good. They were good. Did they out rebound us? No. Um, Oscar, 21 and 22, not bad. I got to get him to talk more. Had four turnovers. He's got to do better. And I wonder, John, uh, what, what is it about Mississippi State that seems to bring out the best in Dante? Um, well, first of all, when I put him in, he got beat twice defensively, and they missed the shot. And I looked at him in the huddle, and I said, guys, you understand I want to leave him in, but what? They said, Dante, you got to stay in front of somebody. And then he got out there and defended better. He blocked the ball. How about the tip dunk he got? And then he finally made one. How about the two he missed that were so in and out? I, I, you can't miss a ball any closer than he missed. But I was happy for him. You know, he hadn't played that much. And again, most of this stuff for me comes down to defensively playing harder than the other guy, playing with unbelievable energy. Look, I thought the way Jacob went down, he blew his Achilles. Then, and all of a sudden, he's back jumping around. I don't know if he was embarrassed because he slipped and fell. They took him off in a stretcher. And he came back, and, and he, he's the guy I put on, the guy that we had to stop. Did it with one Achilles. John Hale, go ahead. Al, what does it say about your team that on the heights, I mean, you didn't have tie tie, it didn't go very well in the second half, so you all still blow down a game the way you did? Well, we needed this game. We said it after. I told the guys. We needed to be in a game like this where we had a chance to end it. We did not dive on the floor for a loose ball. If we got that ball, the game would have been over. We had a guy not go for it. We needed to be, now we got to fight to get back in it. How about you better make free throws? How about you got a guard? We had a guy break down twice late in the game that moved it to overtime. And then Kellen made two ridiculous shots. But look, we're going to Kansas They've been in a bunch of close games. We had to be in this kind of game to understand, like, okay, how do we finish it off? Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't call a timeout. There were two guys open on the play, and we threw it to the wrong guy. We panicked a little bit, but it's okay. Um, I needed the second timeout because I had to call it to get Jacob in. And so saving it, I'm, I'm happy I did it. At the time, I thought I probably should have called it, but – I, we practiced it. Why do I got to call a timeout and go over it again? We practiced it a hundred times. Kyle Tucker, go ahead. No, I told one of the staff, go back and get Oscar. Where is he? Go back and get him. Again, I said this today. I, the game ended. I didn't ask Oscar what was up. I looked at uh, Jacob and teased him. Do you have a blown out Achilles? You went down like a sniper hit you. Because you slipped embarrassed? Why, why did, what happened here? And then I looked at Ty Ty and I said, do you think you're going to play this month? And that was about it. I didn't ask him what hurt, what happened. I'm not the trainer. I don't do it. I leave, the, leave it, and they'll tell me later what the deal is. So I don't, in other words, Kyle, I don't know. Physical, being able to fall out of bed and play well, and how much of it is mental to 
Well, you have every excuse if you don't play well, if you're not either a rotational guy or playing a lot of minutes. What do you say? What would you say? Yeah, you're not playing me enough. It's your fault. You got to take responsibility first for your performance. You got to. Are you playing harder than the guy you're playing against? Or is he playing harder than you? Well, just let him play through it. Okay, so he plays four minutes and gives up two baskets, doesn't get a rebound, and misses a shot. Wait, wait a minute. This isn't eighth grade. You, again, own your performance. It's hard when, like Lance right now, who played great again today. It's hard when you don't know, is Oscar going to play so well that I'm not getting me, many minutes or any minutes? Or is he going to struggle and be in foul trouble and I'm ready? I'm every day Lance Ware is in the gym getting better. Every single day. I look out my window and that kid's in there. I have all the confidence in the world. I played Damian today first, but I told him I was going to do it. Told Lance, I just got to get that kid on the floor and get him to break through a little bit. We went with Bryce. He did okay. But he didn't come up with rebounds and balls. But he dunked that one. There you go. Dude rebounding and defense and diving on the floor it doesn't take skill you don't have to think you just got to scramble and hustle and that's what I'm trying to get guys you know here's the other thing a lot of these guys have the weight of the world on them everyone is you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to play like this you got to say this and you I mean they got the weight of the world they'll even tell you that and so my job yes to hold them accountable but also figure out ways, like, if you're not getting it done, I'm not leaving you in. So let's talk about how we get this done. You know, I, again, I talked to you, you know, you guys know for years, really 30 years, I've had Bob Rotella, a sports psychologist, work with my team and recommend players. Go call them, talk to them, get yourself, because most of this is being mind ready, mind fresh. Knowing if things don't go well, I've worked hard. How about positive self-talk? Now, it's hard if all you're hearing was, I told you so, and that's the worst, and, that, ah, 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 and that's what you hear. It's hard for you to have that positive self-talk. But you got to have it. Because if you don't love yourself, and you're not good to you, no one's going to be good to you. you got to be good to yourself. And that means block out the negative. Be really positive. And that's what I'm trying to get all these kids to do and what I try to do every year. But this place, it's big. Like every game is like Auburn, and they're all like this. And every game we play, someone's going to play their best. I mean, the last five games, Mississippi State shot 24% from the three. What'd they shoot today? 31, but... They made three at the end of the game to put it to overtime. So that's what's going to happen. And like I said, we got to – I told the guys, I don't want to see anybody. Don't call me. We got an off day. Let, you leave me alone. Let me get my mindset for what we got to do. We got to travel to Kansas. Do we play on the road after we come back from Kansas? We got a home game? Oh, my gosh. We got a home game? Wow, I thought they'd put us on the road after that. Larry Bob, go ahead. Hey, John, I'm pretty old, and I don't have a chance to talk to many coaches that have won 800 games. So I just kind of wonder, what's it mean to you to get your 800th win? Um, means I've been doing this a long time, had a lot of good players. And, and, and publicly, I'd like to thank all those players from UMass, all those players from Memphis, all those players here that have won all these games. Um, you know, when you're coaching good kids, when families entrust you with their sons, um, you're blessed. And to be in this job with this fan base, I am blessed. And again, um, you know, it's, I've been doing this a long time like 30-some years, you know, 
56 now, but I started young. I was 18 when I first got my first job. Um, thank goodness Dante has good thoughts about this game because he plays well against these guys, and I don't know why, but he does. And I wanted Bryce to get minutes because I just want to keep giving him opportunities to, to break through. But at the end of the day, Dante played better. Dante did more. So I left him in. Well, um, they wanted to throw the ball to Oscar. The problem was, after we did it a couple times, they had two guys on him, and the kids adjusted. I like the fact that we did some stuff in a huddle that we hadn't really worked on, and they came out and executed, and, and um, Savir got that layup. Um, so, we, and, and again, I, I'll just give it to you. That these guys in these huddles, I'll say, what do you think about this? They said, not enough time. We don't have the time for that. Let's go, let's do it quicker. And I said, okay. That's meaning they're empowered. And every huddle, Savir is talking to his team. And when Ty Ty's there, he's talking to the team. They're all talking to Oscar. Um, you know, they're, it's a good group. Keon played better today. But I said, look. He's even better than that. Like, but he played good. But be better. Uh, making those two free throws, that was a big deal. 